on your election headquarters. Very little is heard of persons with disability, women and the youth during national elections. Youth, your election headquarters is changing the narrative with its groundbreaking election program, the Joy Ballot Box. This year, the Ballot Box is promoting an all-inclusive election 2020. As part of the treatment, we take you into the lives of people we hope to impact. 22-year-old Emanuela Catherine Hayford is one of such people who is forced to endure her quest to climb the academic ladder as a person with disability. This phenomenon, she says, is having a toll on her studies as we prepare to create that platform for the electorate to engage with their duty bearers on issues that will inform their votes. Joy News' Emmanuel Jivenu tells us Emanuela's difficulty in accessing public places a key concern for w, uh, PWDs. This is a daily struggle of Emanuela Catherine Hayford, a student with physical disability at the University of Ghana, Legon. She makes her way from the ground floor to the third floor anytime she attends five different lectures. Climbing a flight of steep stairs makes her tired and leaves her drenched in sweat. For eight months, she's expected to be used to climbing up and descending the stairs. But Catherine says making it up and down strains her and leaves her body aching throughout the day and night. Worst of it all is when she has to use the washroom. Catherine says she is forced to retain her urine and descend slowly to the ground floor to ease herself. An experience she describes as humiliating. I, I go to class panting, like <laughs> short of breath, like it's, it's, it's a hassle. Like I, I basically feel like don't feel the need to be in class because it's, it's stressful. Even the stairs alone you get from people when they see you um, sweating and panting. Even the stairs they will give to you alone. It's, it's a, a different thing altogether and it's sad. On a daily, she has to journey up to the lecture room an hour ahead of schedule in order to secure a seat. Such is her daily nightmare in a quest to assess education. All my lectures are on JQB top floor. I'll have to take the staircase, about 30 staircases before I get up there. And my class is at the far end. And with that, I have to wake up very early in the morning. If I have class at 7.30, I have to make sure I'm ready by 6 so that I'll come and take the staircase at my own pace and go and settle and wait for the lecture to come and it's it's really a struggle because of a daily stress and access in the lecture room sometimes she misses classes and that is taking a toll on her academic work yesterday for instance i had to miss lecture because my lecture was on the top floor the up the top floor of JQB, so I had to miss that lecture because the the trauma I passed through taking the staircase. Yes. A bus for students with mobility challenges transports her to and from lectures, but days that the bus is unavailable, Catherine would have to either spend 12 Ghana cities for a taxi or for feet class. She admits this is having an adverse effect on her studies. At times we'll be giving group works and we would have to meet at a particular point to discuss or make contribution. And all these places are not accessible for persons with disabilities, so I would have to opt out, which means I will lose marks there. The University of Ghana established an office for students with special needs to cater for the welfare of individuals with any form of disabilities. The office is supposed to make sure that the school reasonably accommodates scattering by ensuring all lectures are organized in rooms accessible to all. But the coordinator of the office says Emanuela's plight is yet to come to her attention. When Catherine hasn't informed me about her lectures being at JQB, I know about Catherine, I know she has difficulties, but what I know is that our bus takes her to and from her lectures. Um, but as to the fact that she's at the top floor of JQB, she hasn't told me, I didn't know that. 
if I had known, would have tried to do something about it. And they shouldn't wait till this is the sixth week of lectures. I mean, if we know at the beginning of the semester, then we can do something about it. But if she waits till this long, then it's more difficult to do something about it. A long term, we have to make the buildings accessible. And I've been saying that every opportunity I get. Um, it is the law. It is in our own policy. We recently had a policy approved. So long term, definitely the university will have to make these buildings accessible. In 2006, Ghana passed the Disability Law Act 715, which aimed at ending the discrimination that faces people with disability. A 10-year moratorium given by the Act for old buildings to be renovated to disability-friendly status has indeed not been met. The moratorium ended in 2016. Students like Catherine therefore go through unnecessary strain to access education. But Catherine is determined to rise above the odds. As she climbs the academic ladder, she wants to be aided with a prosthetic leg. So my number one wish is to get a prosthetic leg. Yeah, that would be my number one wish right now. So to feel comfortable, work normally. Until then, Catherine would continue to face discrimination in the quest to satisfy her academic thirst and hunger. Emmanuel Givenus reports for Joy News. Now, the ballot box project lead here at your election headquarters, MFA Atiamua Early, joins us live via Zoom with more. Also on phone, uh, to, I mean, to join the conversation is president of the Voter Regional Federation of Persons with Disability, who will be featuring out the Mading Outdoor event at Hohoi, Mr. Eluloko Fiji. Uh, good to have you, lady and gentleman. Uh, let me start with you, MFA. Tell us about this year's ballot box and social inclusion. Thank you very much, um, Aisha. So as you heard in Emanuele's story, which just played, we are targeting persons like Emanuela, women, youth group, you, you know. The first time we executed ballot box was in 2016, and the focus was on poverty. But this year, we are looking at an all-inclusive election 2020. And when I say all-inclusive, we do not want the conversation about the campaigns, the manifestos, everything regarding the, this year's election to be limited to just a few of the population. We want everyone to be part. And you would agree with me over the period, very little is heard of such people as far as elections are concerned. We are talking about the youth, we are talking about women, we are talking about people with disability. And Emanuela's case, for instance, you can see she has an issue with accessing public facilities. And this has been a conversation which has been on the ground for so long, but we don't seem to see any solution to this problem as far as persons with disability are concerned in Ghana's development. So we as a media house in your election headquarters is to provide a platform first time, the second time running. So this election, because at the end of the day, people like Emanuela and others would be going to the polls to cast their votes to get leaders to put them in position so that they can take decisions in their interest. So on the ballot box, which we are starting the maiden event on Friday at Hopeway, we are gathering people like Emanuela, the youth, women, so they would meet with their duty bearers, people who are seeking to represent them in government. Then they can put these key issues which are of most concern to them, then they can get them addressed. Essentially, it is to tell them that if you should come to me and ask for my vote this year, these are the things I'm looking out for you to tell me that you resolve or you take care of when I give you my, my vote. And so therefore, that is what we are doing for this year's ballot box. And as usual, you can't expect anything less of us here at your election headquarters. Nothing but the best. And come this Friday, we are gathering at the old Pohwe Municipal Assembly, ensuring all the COVID protocols, preventive protocols, so we can engage everyone concerned to ensure that these groups of people, I'm talking about women, I'm talking about the youth, I'm talking about persons with disability, are factored in as the political parties 
are putting together their manifestos. They include these issues which mean most to the population in their manifestos. Mr. J, I'm sure you identify with Emanuela's story and you're looking forward to a ballot box to make your case? Thank you very much for accepting me in this afternoon. Um, I feel very proud uh, hearing of uh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel this afternoon. Uh, for all this one, uh, since 2006, when uh, the Disability Act of 715 was, was passed in the parliament, Up to now, uh, Parliament is not able to pass any ally legislative instrument that will back this law for persons with disability. So that a place, institution like University of Ghana, we can take the law on such institution for admitting persons with disability without making provision for them. Uh, sorry to say, the officer. Um, Said she has not complained about her difficulty uh, of the use of the facilities earlier. Now, so they are in midway the semester before uh, the issue was, uh, her attention was brought to it. Um, it shouldn't be so in Ghana today. The disability law is 14 years old, and University of Ghana should still have their infrastructure as it were but continue to admit persons with disability, yes, we also have the right to attend that school. Our persons with disability also have the right to access better education in that institution. So um, I think the ballot box is, is coming at the right time when um, uh, we will be meeting our duty bearers and then such Problems will be put before them, and the whole world will hear how they will be addressing it in case they come to power. So um, uh, we, 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 we are sorry. We, uh, our sister is going through such problems over there. I also passed through such problems in the University of Education, Winneba, some, some, some 10, 12 years ago. Um, but it depends on each individual's uh, uh, seat or how we, why we are able to manage the use of those facilities. But I am pleading with the stakeholders, the government, all individuals concerned, the political authorities to do something, take an action today, so that I, I always say, when they do it today, thinking they are doing it for the disabled today, tomorrow, any of them can be like it. And they also have the use of such facility. We lost Mr. J there, but let me bring back MFA, lead, um, who's leading that uh, project, Ballot Box. What do we seek to achieve with this? Aisha, the first is to, as I stated earlier, is to provide a platform to let the electorates and their duty bearers or whoever is seeking to represent them in government be on the same platform so that they can have discussions of issues of concern to them. And we are also looking to uh, building an informed electorate, you know, most of the time people will just vote because, excuse me to say, a friend is voting in a certain pattern or a family is noted for a certain political party tradition so they would have to vote like that no you want to understand the issues you want to see that you are voting you want to take a personal decision that this is the reason why i am voting and another is to make sure that whatever the political parties are putting together in their manifesto are the realities on the grounds as long as the news and the concerns of the electorate are concerned. You don't go and sit in your corner and just put anything together and then come and tell the people, if you give me the power, this is what I will do for you. No, I should be the one to tell you that this is what I need and this is what I want you to do for me. So on the ballot box, 
this Friday at Pokwe. This is what is going to happen. We are providing the platform first for the electorate and the political actors to be able to discuss issues of concern to them. We also want to promote a very in, uh, a situation where the electorate will be informed, they will vote based on issues, and as much as possible. The manifestos that the political parties will be, put, will be putting together shouldn't be just for their own political interest, but it should be a projection of the realities of the issues, concerns, of the elections on the ground. Of course, uh, you need to stick and stay with your election headquarters on the Joy News channel for everything elections. Thank you, MFA Tiamwa Eli.